Today, we become legends. So I've had many requests asking for this video in some form or another over the years and today we're finally going to tackle this one. These are meant to be single item, single god combos where the god in question synergizes extremely well with a particular item for whatever reason. I think just jumping in will explain the format better than words can do, so let's start. If you enjoy my videos and want to help support the channel, then check out the join button below this video. For as little as a dollar, you can get access to custom badges in the comments and live streams, emotes, special attention from me in streams, and tons of other neat features that I spent a while working on. So hit that join button below if you want to support the channel. But anyway, let's jump in. So this first one should explain the video format within about 5 seconds. King Arthur and Gladiator Shield. I'm talking the pre-reworked Glad Shield here that healed you on every god hit by your abilities and cost 1700 gold. This is probably the combo that came to mind for a lot of you when you saw this video and you recommended, and that's for a good reason. Not only does King Arthur have 6 damaging basic abilities, that's 6 chances to proc Glad Shield on every rotation of his kit, he also has 2 ultimates with incredibly low cooldowns, and on top of that, most of his abilities are capable of hitting multiple enemies very easily. All this results in King Arthur, a god with no built-in sustain, being one of the strongest self-sustainers in solo lane simply because of what this item did for him. I dare say he was a large reason this item was changed, which is a perfect candidate for a broken item god combo. My second combo for this list is one that still exists to this day, Anubis and Bancroft's Talon. I feel like this one is just drilled into our brains so much that we forget how good this item really is for Anubis. He's a god with no mobility that roots himself for half of his kit, the only reason he's even slightly viable is because of his passive synergy with lifesteal, and Bancroft's Talon is the best way to abuse that. The power spike Anubis gets once he finishes this item has to be one of the hardest spikes of any god in the game, maybe even in the history of smite. He goes from being a decent mage with pretty good wave clear but not amazing god damage to an unkillable super doggo that heals for 50% of his health just by pressing 3 on your wave. This combo used to be even more ridiculous before the Bancroft's nerf that brought the lifesteal down from 20% to 15%. Prior to that nerf you could hit the lifesteal cap with just this one item on Anubis. Pretty insane. Oh, and before we move on, buy anti-heal against Anubis, please. If I hear one more person saying he's not a healer, bro, and buying Deso over Divine, I will start hinting. Going back to the past, but not too far for number three, I have Mercury and Golden Blade. I know there are a few gods who use this item really well, like Baka, Arachne, even Nemesis to an extent, but I'm talking about the pre-nerf Mercury one when Golden Blade was first added to the game. I'm talking Merc Jungle having almost a thousand GPM in Conquest and a four level lead on every other god in the game. All a Merc Jungle player had to do was step one in inch into a camp aggro area, press 1, then move on to the next camp. Basically from level 9 onwards against Mercury, your back camps didn't exist. All you had to do was track your timer, peek the corner and one shot them from range, then dash away. It was a bit like how Bakasura plays now but on steroids. This was quite possibly the most overpowered farming method we've ever had in the game, and I'm including season 2 and 3 solo laners and golden bow hunters, who were both frequently 2-3 to three levels up on everyone else in a normal match. Anyone who played during this era, and especially those who made Merc at this time, will know this one deserves a spot in this video. Moving on to number 4, we have a tried and true classic, Regrowth Hercules. This one is especially relevant now more than ever with Herc support building this item either first or second in nearly every build right now. When I first discovered that you can be at full health and still proc Regrowth's passive effect, it changed the way I played Herc and I haven't looked back. And this was 5 years ago, I played Herc for a long time, and this item has been a staple in most of my builds throughout the seasons and metas. This one feels like it gets overlooked a little bit and dismissed as just an optional pickup in a decent Herc build, but in my eyes this one is essential for him to play the playstyle he does and is definitely deserving of the number 4 spot. For number 5, I'm going to cheat the system a little bit, Alquang and Sol with Polynomicon. I simply couldn't pick one over the other here, and both cases are nearly identical in that they had an ability that functioned as a basic attack and thus procced Polynomicon's bonus damage passive. Of course, this functionality, much like Golden Blade procking on Mercury's 1, has been removed from their kits, and their only way to use Polynomicon now is through standard basic attacks. For those of you who only started playing recently, Alquang actually went through a long phase of being played as a burst god as opposed to the attack speed build he uses now, and the main reason for that was Poly activating on his 3. A simple 2-3 range 2 combo could 80% someone when you add Polynomicon and Soul Reaver into the mix, plus you could one or ult after the fact to confirm a full HP target. And as for Sol, she was busted enough on her release that this functionality was honestly a bit overshadowed, but it was still a very powerful interaction and ultimately a very powerful god item combo. Number 6 is one that isn't necessarily powerful or meta, but is one of my favourite interactions in the whole game, so I simply had to include it. Fafnir was Gem of Isolation. 
For the uninitiated, Fafnir's 2 deals bonus damage on top of the ally's basic attack that you buffed. This damage counts as Fafnir's damage, not the buffed ally's damage. You can probably see where I'm going from here. Yeah, this item will activate on ability damage effects such as Divine Ruin, Soul Reaver, E Staff, and most importantly, Gem of Isolation Slow Passive. What this does is basically turn Fafnir's 2 into Give an Ally Frostbound Hammer, or if you're in Dragon Form, Give your entire team Frostbound Hammer which I just think is a really interesting mechanic, and while it might not be top tier or meta to build this item on Fafnir, it's hella fun and allows you to flex your game knowledge on those silver scrubs that roast you for building it. Coming in at number 7, we have a tried and true combo, Nuar Soul Reaver. It used to be that Reaver would only proc on the highest HP enemy when hitting multiple with the same ability, which didn't really work too well with Nuar's ultimate. However, in the rework to magical items, this was changed and it now hits everyone for bonus damage. Needless to say, this gives your Nuar ults that little bit of extra oomph to steal, <coughs> I mean secure your teammates kills. And finally, number 8 is an old but gold item god combo, that being Ymir and Deathbringer. Hold on a minute, you might say, Ymir is magical, he can't buy Deathbringer. Well, you're correct, but in Smite's closed beta, any god could build any item and have any type of power, which allowed for some pretty insane stuff. The funniest of which was combining Ymir's passive with Deathbringer. You do your standard basic attack damage, double it from Ymir passive, double it again from critting, and then add 50% on top of that from Deathbringer's passive, which used to be 50% back in the day. Yeah, needless to say, this is one of the most hilarious and situationally broken ways to play the game back then, with your basic attacks effectively hitting for 5 times damage. Add a Polynomicon in there, and you could legitimately freeze and bonk someone to death in one hit. But that's it from me for this one. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. We're on the road to 100k, so if you watched at the end, you probably enjoyed the video. Why not subscribe for more? If you have any other suggestions for video ideas like this, then definitely leave them down below. And if you do have any cool, interesting item god combos that I didn't list in this video, drop them down there as well, because I may end up making a part 2 to this one if there's enough interesting stuff to talk about. But anyway, I'll catch you guys in another one later on. Have a great day, and peace out, you nerds.